Today, we're going to look at our first technique of integration, and this technique is known as integration by parts. Integration by parts is, in a sense, the integration equivalent of the product rule from differentiation. Right? So recall that if we were given a function h of x equals f of x times g of x, right? Then what we had was h prime of x was g prime times f of x plus f prime times g of x. Now also recall that by definition of anti differentiation, this means that f of x times g of x is equal to the antiderivative of g prime of x times f of x plus f prime of x times g of x dx. Right, then using properties of antiderivatives, we can write this as the antiderivative of g prime of x times f of x dx plus the antiderivative of f prime of x times g of x dx. Now it does not matter at this point which antiderivative we solve for. So without loss of generality, what we can do is we can write this. We can say that the antiderivative of f of x times g prime of x is equal to f of x times g of x minus the antiderivative of f prime of x times g of x dx. Now it is often convenient that we use u and v. So what we do is we say, okay, here is our theorem. And this is our integration by parts formula. We say let u equal f of x and v equal g of x. Both be functions with continuous derivatives then the antiderivative of u dv is equal to u times v minus the antiderivative of v du let's now look at several examples All right, first, let's look at evaluating the antiderivative of x times sine of x dx. So here's what we do. Let's let u be x, right? So typically you want u to be the function that has the simpler derivative. If u is x, this would mean that dv is sine of x times dx. Well, u being x means du has to be dx. And if dv is sine of x dx, then v would be the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine. And what we do is we take the simple antiderivative, right? So recall that that means we take the antiderivative where the constant of integration is equal to zero. With this, what we get is the antiderivative of x times sine of x dx is equal to negative x times cosine of x, right? So u, go away, u times v, 
then it is minus the antiderivative of negative cosine x times dx, right? It's v du. What this winds up being is negative x cosine of x plus the antiderivative cosine of x dx. Now we know what the antiderivative cosine of x is. So we get negative x cosine of x plus sine of x. And now it's at the very end. We can write c. Or we can rewrite it as sine of x minus x cosine of x plus our constant of integration. Let's now take a look at the antiderivative natural log of x over x cubed dx. Okay. Now again, as a rule of thumb, what we want to do is pick u, whose derivative is simpler. So let's take u to be the natural log of x. This will leave us with dv as 1 over x cubed dx. du would then be 1 over x dx. And v is the antiderivative of 1 over x cubed. All right, so power rule, right? Add 1, divide by the same, so we get negative 1 over 4x to the, sorry, negative 1 over 2x squared. What we then have right, is u times v minus the antiderivative of v times du. So we have negative log x over 2x squared plus the antiderivative of 1 over 2x cubed dx. This would equal negative log x over 2x squared minus 1 over 4x squared plus a constant. Okay, let's now look at the antiderivative of x squared times e to the x dx. So we'll take u as x squared, which means we have to take dv as our e to the x dx. Right, so du is 2x dx, and v would just simply be e to the x. So what we have. We have u times v minus the antiderivative of v times du. So x squared e to the x minus, let's factor out that 2, 2 times the antiderivative of x e to the x dx. Now notice, right, that this second piece now, I'm sorry, I don't know why that pen was so thick. Right, this second piece also requires integration by parts. Right, so let's say, let's call it u sub 1. Well, let that be x. Right, then dv sub 1 would be e to the x dx. Right, du sub 1 would just be dx, and then v sub 1 would, again, be e to the x. Now what we have is 
is x squared e to the x minus 2 times, now I'll do integration by parts again, uv minus antiderivative of v du. So we have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 times the antiderivative of e to the x dx. And this equals x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2e to the x plus a constant. Or if we wanted to, we could factor out an e to the x and be left with x squared minus 2x plus 2 and then all times our constant. Let's now consider antiderivative of t cubed times e to the t squared dt. Well, what we can do is first rewrite this as t squared times t e to the t squared. So what we can do is we say let u be t squared, which would make dv t excuse me, t e to the t squared dt, right? Now du would be 2t dt. And v would now be, we want the antiderivative of t e to the t squared. And so let's do that over here. All right, we're going to use a change of variable, let's say w is t squared, right? So then dw, 2t dt. So we get 1 half antiderivative of e to the w dw, which is just e to the w, or 1 half e to the w, rather. So what we get for v here is 1 half e to the t squared. Right, so this will become u times v. Right, so t squared over 2 times e to the t squared minus the antiderivative of v du. So minus the antiderivative of t e to the t squared dt. Well, there's no need to do integration by parts again. because right, we just did that antiderivative. It's over in green, right? So this is just now minus 1 half e to the t squared plus a constant. Again, we can factor out common term. So if we wanted to, factor out the e to the t squared over 2 and be left with t squared minus 1 plus our constant. Let's now look at antiderivative sine of natural log of x. Now, at first glance, this may not look like an integration by parts problem. However, it is. Isn't sine, uh, sine of log of x the same as sine of log of x times 1? So what we can do is we can say, well, let u be sine of log of x. And dv would just simply be dx. Now du would be cosine of log of x all over x dx. And v would just simply be x. So what we get is u times v, so x times sine of log of x, minus the antiderivative of v du, which would just be cosine of log of x dx. Well, we once again need integration by parts. 
So let's say u sub 1 is cosine of log of x. v sub 1 would just be dx. I'm sorry, dv sub 1 would be dx. du sub 1 would now be negative sine of log x over x. And v1 is simply x. So we have x times sine of log of x minus, now we do integration by parts, uv x cosine of log of x minus the antiderivative of v du. So this becomes plus antiderivative. I forgot a dx in my du, oh well. And I should have had a dx in there. Write this out, x sine of log x minus x times cosine of log x and then minus the antiderivative sine of log x dx. Well, notice now what we have. Right, we've written the antiderivative sine of log x in terms of itself. So, why not solve for it algebraically? If we add that antiderivative to both sides, what we get is 2 times the antiderivative sine of log x is equal to x times the sine of log x minus x times the cosine of log x. which means that the antiderivative of sine of log x is that whole thing divided by 2. And now we're done, so let's add our constant of integration. And there is our antiderivative. Again, we could, if we wanted to, factor out and x over 2. I think I'll just leave it there though. Right now obviously if we wanted to evaluate a definite integral, well we can just naturally extend integration by parts. Right, so let's call this a proposition. Integration by parts for definite integrals. Again, let u equal f of x, v equal g of x, be functions with continuous derivatives on a closed interval a to b. Then the integral from a to b of u dv is uv evaluated from a to b minus the integral from a to b of v du. And let's now look at a couple of examples for dealing with definite integrals that require integration by parts. So what we want to do is let's go ahead and find area under the graph of y equals the inverse tangent of x 
over 0 to 1. Right now recall that area is an integral. So we're actually looking to evaluate this. We want integral from 0 to 1 of inverse tangent of x dx. Well, we don't have a way of evaluating an inverse tangent. Well, let's try integration by parts. So we say u is the inverse tangent of x. This would make dv dx. Right, so d would have to be, remember, derivative. 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, and then v itself would be x. So, we have u times v, so x times the inverse tangent of x. Evaluate for when x is equal 0 to 1, and then minus the antiderivative of 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Let's go ahead and evaluate this first piece from 0 to 1. So at 1, we get inverse tangent of 1. When x is 0, the whole thing winds up being 0. So we just get inverse tangent of 1 minus the antiderivative from 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And the inverse tangent of 1 happens to be pi over 4. Right? Now, that second integral is a simple change of variable. And what we'd see is this would wind up giving us minus 1 half log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1, and that is evaluated, again, from x equals 0 to 1. So we get what? Log of 2, and that's when x is equal to 1. Then we get plus a half log of 1. And of course, log of 1 is simply 0. And so what we find is this evaluates to pi over 4 minus a half log of 2. Or if you wanted to, we could write it as pi over 4 minus log of root 2. Either answer would be acceptable. So what we're going to do in this example is derive what's known as the sine reduction formula. And the sine reduction formula is this, the antiderivative of sine to the n of x dx is equal to negative 1 over n times sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x plus n minus 1 over n times the antiderivative of sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. So this is what we want to show. So what we're going to do is, okay, let u be sine to the n minus 1 of x leaving dv to be the sine of x dx. Now du would be n minus 1 times the sine to the n minus 2 of x. Then chain rule says times cosine of x and all that times dx. And v would then be negative cosine of x. So using integration by parts, what we get is the antiderivative sine to the n of x dx is equal to negative sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x, right? That's u times v. Then we want minus the antiderivative of v du. So this will become plus, right? Because v is negative. 
Let's factor out that n minus 1, antiderivative, sine to the n minus 2 of x times cosine squared of x dx. From here, let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity for cosine squared. So we can now write this as sine n minus 2 of x times 1 minus sine squared of x. We'll distribute that sine to the n minus 2 through and write it as two separate antiderivatives. Right, so from here, right, sine to the n minus 2 times sine squared, add the exponent, so you're left with sine to the n. Well, notice that that is this antiderivative here. So if we add this n minus 1 times antiderivative sine to the n x dx to both sides, what we get is 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1, which is just n antiderivative sine to the nx, is now equal to this. All it's left to do now is divide by n. And we get negative 1 over n sine to the n minus 1 x cosine of x plus n minus 1 over n antiderivative sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. And if we look, that is exactly what we wanted, right? So we say the derivation is complete. We now have the sine reduction formula.